Welcome to Key Tech. Please describe this channel if you are interesting in today's video. After 2019, Huawei has suffered a total of four suppression. The United States and other countries have imposed sanctions on Huawei. Therefore, Huawei's sales share in the domestic market has dropped significantly, which has also caused many difficulties for Huawei in China. The market is not what it used to be. After Huawei was sanctioned, such a saying has become popular in China. Supporting domestic products, buying Huawei is patriotic. With this kind of statement, Huawei has also made a lot of money, and the market has gradually improved, but it is good to think about it, but the reality is cruel. Today, Huawei has ushered in the fifth secondary sanctions. Huawei has made great contributions not only to China, but also to the world. It breaks the traditional ideological monopoly and shows great diversity in network equipment. In a short period of time, communication technology has developed rapidly, and since Huawei's independent innovation, the number of applications for intellectual property rights has doubled. Huawei is the global leader in 5G and has the largest number of 5G patent applications in the world. When other manufacturers entered 5G, Huawei had already mastered the third-generation 5G technology and used it for the self-developed Balong 5000 baseband in the chip. It is only because of US sanctions that Huawei has slowed down in 5G. Mobile phones cannot use the 5G network, and the remaining 5G globalization construction encounters various variables. Qualcomm took this opportunity to overtake the car and release the world's first 5.5G chip. The 5G era is coming, and it is expected that countries around the world will enter the 5G era one after another around 2024. At that time, the Internet industry will transform into the Internet of Things and realize the interconnection of all things. Based on the characteristics of 5G low latency and high speed, it will help the development of the industry. In the 5G era, industries such as telemedicine, smart ports, and artificial intelligence will usher in rapid development. With Huawei's mastery of 5G technology, it has the ability to provide high-quality services to billions of users around the world and help operators in various countries build 5G. However, in the process of Huawei's 5G globalization, the United States frequently engages in small actions behind the scenes to hinder the globalization of 5G and dismantle old equipment. Everyone can see the specific situation. Huawei promises to sign 5G no backdoor agreements with various countries and accept anatomical verification to prove that Huawei's 5G technology is no problem. But it is not so easy to wake up someone who is pretending to be asleep. What Huawei needs to do is to persevere to the end, but as the pace slows down, the effect of sanctions is beginning to show, and Qualcomm has made a breakthrough. According to the news from Qualcomm, it officially released the world's first 5.5G chip, which is the Snapdragon X75 5G baseband chip. This chip supports 10 carrier aggregation and can easily achieve 10 gigabits per second downlink speed in Wi Fi 7 and 5G networks. According to more information from Qualcomm, the Snapdragon X75 5G will achieve higher communication upgrades in the fields of Internet of Vehicles and XR. At present, the Snapdragon X75 5G baseband chip is in the sampling stage, and the terminal products 
will be released in the second half of this year. Everyone has heard of 5G and used 5G networks, but they are a little unfamiliar with 5.5G. What kind of technology is this? Regarding 5.5G, in fact, Qualcomm is not the first dabbler. Huawei has already set a 5.5G research and development project. In November 2020, Huawei stated at the Global Mobile Broadband Forum that 5.5G is an evolution of 5G, and three new scenarios have been expanded. These three scenarios include UILLC, MMTC, and EMBB. Based on these scenarios, 5.5G can improve the application of industrial manufacturing, Internet of Things, and Ultra Broadband. On the basis of 5G's low latency and high reliability, it integrates and builds communication perception capabilities. Of course, the development of 5.5G is not achieved overnight and compatible 5G devices are also required. If you want to enter the 5.5G era, you must ensure the full arrival of the 5G era. With the support of a complete industry ecology, it provides a wide range of application solutions. Huawei released a 5.5G Uplink Ultra Broadband solution to realize the end-to-end -end technological evolution of 5G plus 8K, 3D VR. It can be seen that Huawei's 5.5G is at the forefront of the industry. Whether it is theoretical basic research or practical solutions, it basically sets the future direction of 5.5G. However, the American company Qualcomm released a 5.5G chip to achieve anti-overtaking. If it weren't for the change in Huawei's chip business, Huawei may be the first to release 5.5G chips in the world. Now it is a bit unexpected to be one step ahead of Qualcomm, but it is also expected. After all, Qualcomm is the world's largest supplier of baseband chips. In addition, Qualcomm has mastered the core patents of the previous network era and is indeed capable of deploying 5.5G network technology. If we enter the 6G era in the future, Qualcomm will definitely not be absent. So what are the characteristics of Qualcomm's 5.5G chip? Compared with the X70 baseband, the energy efficiency is increased by 20%, the AI performance is increased by 2.5 times, and the processing efficiency is better. In real-life applications, the Snapdragon X75 can maintain continuous performance output in scenarios such as subways, stations, and elevators. All in all, Qualcomm Snapdragon X75 is a 5.5G chip of great significance. Whether it is the chip itself or technology scalability, Qualcomm has taken an important step and once again become an important pioneer in the global 5G industry. It can only be said that things are impermanent. Originally, this was the glory of Huawei. Huawei has its own baseband chip business, and its communication performance in similar manufacturing processes is no worse than that of Qualcomm. Even in some technical aspects, Qualcomm may not be Huawei's opponent. At this point, what Huawei needs to do is to continue to develop the 5G business. Even if the chip cannot return to the stage for the time being, Huawei still has not stopped investing in the high silicon department. As long as it can afford it, the high silicon semiconductor department will remain. Waiting for the day when the return of the king will be realized.